Hello and welcome to Weekend Wisdom. Today we're going to talk about Social Security and how is it affected by either death or divorce. So grab your cup of coffee, sit back, and let's get started. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV where education is the key to a successful financial future. First up, don't forget you can click show more for additional links and information on today's video. Also, if you find today's video of value, please do consider subscribing to our channel. Besides educational videos, we put out a weekly market update, which you can see here for our most recent update. So, today we're gonna to talk about Social Security, and some of the different options. And I think that this is important because a lot of people don't realize how many options are available to them. So first up, we're gonna talk about widows and widower benefits. Okay, so when we get to the benefits here for widows and widowers, there's a couple things we need to consider. Length of marriage, your age, your spouse's age, and also when you start receiving those benefits. So first up is length of marriage. You have to have been married for at least nine months in order to collect on survivor benefits. But there are three different scenarios where they can override that. Number one is sharing of a child. Number two is an accident, accidental death. Another scenario. Number three is military service. If you passed away during military service, then your spouse is eligible for those full benefits, even if you've been married for less than nine months. So next up, what else do we have to consider? One, when you receive benefits, which the earliest you can receive at age 60. In that scenario, you're only going to get 60% of the full benefit. Receiving those benefits at full retirement age, FRA, if you can wait till 66 or 67, you then can collect 100% of those benefits. Of course, if you wait till age 70, that is your best option because you'll get the full benefits at that time. Now, if there is a disability case, you can receive those benefits starting at age 50. Next, you can only collect on one benefit, but you can switch. Okay, so what are we talking about here? In this scenario, let's say that you're still working. You want to work until full retirement age, FRA. Okay, at that time, you can start taking your spousal survivor benefits. Your benefits will continue to grow at 8%. And then at full retirement age, as far as 70, you can look at the benefit, and if your benefit's higher, you can then start taking that. Okay, next thing is, when we meet with new clients and we're going through the financial planning process, hopefully we meet them before they started Social Security benefits, because we do look at who has a higher benefit. Now, if one spouse has a higher benefit, we encourage them to delay as long as possible. Of course, they have to have the means to be able to do that. That way, if there is a death, you're always going to have a higher benefit based on that because when death does occur, you have a choice. You don't have to continue your benefits. You can take yours or your spouse's, whichever is higher. So next up, let's talk about Social Security and divorce. So first up, you have to consider that you must have been married for at least 10 years in order to take benefits from your divorced spouse. The other thing is you must have been divorced for at least two years. Lastly, you have to be single. So you cannot remarry now, not necessarily. If you do remarry and then get divorced again, unfortunately, now you have a choice. You can choose which ex-spouse has a higher benefit and take that benefit if you do choose. Next scenario is you must be at least 62 years of age to start 
receiving spousal benefits on an ex-spouse. All right. Finally, you, the benefit you would receive, okay, is based on your own work record must be less than 50% of the benefit you would receive based on your ex's record. Okay, let me say that again. The benefit you would receive is based on your own work record must be less than 50% of the benefit you receive based on your ex record. Okay, so you need to consider that when making that decision. If your ex-spouse dies early, you have an opportunity to get the full benefit as well. Okay, so if you decide to take before full retirement age, 66 for those born between 53 and 54, your 50% benefit will be reduced by 50%, between 7 and 8% for each year leading up to full retirement age. So in some cases, it definitely makes sense to wait. So there's another reason to consider waiting. At FRA, full retirement age, if you're eligible for benefits on your own record, as well as that of your ex-spouse, you can choose to initially take only the divorced spouse benefit until a later date. So that'll allow you to delay yours and let it grow so then maybe at age 70 say you're going to have a higher benefit at that time. So there are some different reasons why you want to wait. Now what if your ex-spouse has passed? You kind of talked about this. If 60 married for 10 years you're entitled to 100%. The same benefit as a widow or widower. Okay so the rules regarding marital status are different in this case as well. You can be married and still collect survivor benefits as long as you didn't remarry until age 60. We'll have that below. It is a mouthful. For example, you could be married to one person and still collect benefits from another. So here, we've talked about some different options as it pertains to death and divorce. Yes, it can be very confusing. Don't just make a decision at this age or that age. Make sure you understand your options. Work with a financial planner, call the Social Security Administration, go online, ssa.gov. There's a lot of great information there. Again, a lot, so it does get confusing, but at least you have a basis to ask the right questions and most importantly, make the right decision. As always, thank you so much for watching. We hope that this was both helpful and entertaining. Thank you so much. This is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV.